We are back today on Black Belt Tips. We are talking about UFC 214 and opening the armbar box. We also have with us a special guest. Stay tuned. I'll see you in a minute. All right, guys, this is Bill Jones, head instructor of Top Level Martial Arts. Thank you for watching Black Belt Tips with your ears. <laughs> so uh, anyway, we are in downtown Cuyahoga Falls, looking beautiful today. It's a great day outside. With me, as always, my friend, my co-host, my, my comrade, my compadre, the man who is slightly above novice in all things... Mr. Edward Whitney. How you doing, Ed? Doing fantastic. Excited to be here for this. I'm excited to have you. Can you move a little bit closer to the, the mic? So yes, sir. All right, cool. And uh, also with us, uh, BJJ Phenom. You may have seen him in the brackets at the... Well, you were you were at the... Uh, what was it called? The the Intergalactic... Oh, yeah. yeah uh, Tony Jiu-Jitsu Finn. Championship. Yeah. yeah. Where yeah. the 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 prize was a right. unicorn? Is that what they said? Mm, I don't know if that was the prize, but that was like the theme. Okay. <laughs> you know, a tournament series business when it's you know has like the words rookie in the name and mm. it's held in a high school gymnasium where they're also doing a karate tournament. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, my friends, this is Mr. <laughs> Kendall Gage Hi. with us today. He uh, he is a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and. Uh, uh, has his own kind of style, more of a, a crucifix slash. I I want to say rubber guard, but you don't really play a lot of yeah, rubber I guard. I play a lot of overhook, and then I like go to rubber guard just long enough for people to think, "Oh no, what is this?" And then I go back to overhook. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, I would say very untraditional style of yeah. jujitsu. Um. Anyway, guys, how are we doing today? Doing great. Doing yeah. great. All right. All right. Ed, anything happen over the weekend? No. No. Uh-uh. Nothing. Nothing major for you, Kendall. Anything for you? Not a whole lot. I've had a lot of free time this week, so I've been in here all the time. So. That's that's excellent. In here being literally in the podcast booth. Right. He's just spent yes. his whole week here right. getting ready for this episode. Staring at this chair I'm sitting in. The the podcast booth being the the lobby of our, right. our jujitsu school. Yeah. <laughs> I can see the map from where I'm at. <laughs> we all can. <laughs> um so anyway, uh you know, for anybody who doesn't know, we are talking about an armbar box today. That's one oh, of the things yeah. we're going to be doing. Um, full disclosure, we have already done this podcast, and I seem to have messed up and, or corrupted the file or whatever, messed up. So we're doing it again. Yep. Because we thought it was a decent product. We wanted to review it. Um, I and, thought it was better than decent. I'm going to yeah. be honest with you. After I spent a little time with the stuff, I was actually really pleased. Okay, Now you're good. really getting the, the real like, yeah, appraisal so, of it. Yeah, yeah. so this is a week later. It, yeah. Here's the funny thing. I, I wrote, I wrote uh, the, the guy who runs the company today, and I was like, hey, this is what happened. You know, I, I, I effed up. You know, just so you know, can, can we – because there's a deal that's going to go on with it. I said, can we extend that? And he's like, yeah, sure. He goes, I was getting worried. I said, no, it's actually a pretty cool product. I said, yeah. but, but – uh, I lost the file, so I lost it or it got corrupted. I I think it well, anyway. It doesn't matter. I was really pleased it. with it. Okay, so um, but then we're also talking a little UFC two thirteen and two fourteen, right? Uh, actually, it's two fourteen. Well, two fourteen is coming out, and then UFC on Fox twenty five is the event you're actually talking about with Weidman with the super low ratings. Y- yeah, well, they no, so, this was pay per views. They 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 didn't even sell one hundred and ten thousand pay per views. Oh, it, really? It was, it so that must problem. have been the last one. Yeah, yeah, whatever the most recent pay per view one. Was. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so I thought you were talking about UFC on Fox because it, it, it also one. did terrible. Ratings. It was a huge problem for them because it was an overseas one, and and uh, oh, okay, they're used to selling literally like a million of them. Yeah, and they sold one hundred and ten thousand. I think so, we all know why. Why? Um, because what's coming up Saturday and what's coming up on August twenty sixth. What do those have to do with? Um, I, I don't. I don't think everybody can spend fifty dollars every sixty dollars every two weeks on a pay per view. Yeah, that's probably true. So they have to be selective with which one they buy. And if you got, I don't remember the card for two thirteen because I'll be honest with you, I didn't even watch it, and you know I watch them all. But two fourteen, you got Bones, DC. You know what I mean? It's so. If you have to pick one or the other, yeah. If you're 
if you're in it for all well, like the flash, then you're definitely going to be watching. Well, the, the one that did yep. really bad was the one that Nunez was supposed to defend her title and had to pull yeah. out of, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, Robert Whitaker and uh, Yell Romero. Yeah, yeah, that's yep. the one. Yep, it did horrible. Yeah, you know I watch them all. And, and, I still and haven't watched it. Yo Romero, I, I mean, I, he's he's a pretty tough dude and usually a pretty good draw, I yeah. would think. So Whitaker knocked him out, I believe. Yeah. Did he? I, don't I believe know. so. See, I don't, I don't even know. I well, you know how much I watch these things. Yeah, but I, this, yeah, I, I think I'm a better barometer of how bad it did. Yeah, I can't remember the last time I didn't watch one. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so whatever one that was did yeah. horrible. <laughs> yeah, and then the following week on Fox they had a free event, which got its all time lowest ratings ever. And that's where we got to discuss because money's right. not a factor there. Yeah. You just got to turn the TV on, and nobody watched. Well, who who, who was on the card? Uh, Chris Weidman. Was uh, fighting, oh, I can't remember, Kevin Gaslam was the main event. And, and I think part of it was Weidman's on a three-fight losing streak, you know, so it, it kind of takes some of your luster away. I, I don't think I can remember the last time somebody who lost their last three fights headlined, a main, you know, it was the main event. So but, I think that had a lot to do with it. But Weidman did finish him classic jujitsu fashion with a, a kind of triangle choke. Did he? Yeah. I didn't see I it, think yeah. it was an arm triangle, wasn't it? Oh, okay, cool. I believe it. With like Matt Sarah shouting at him all the oh, okay. while. Veins <laughs> popping out of his traps in his head wherever the line between those is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one's found that line yet. <laughs> no one's sure. <laughs> I've seen a picture of Matt Sarah's calf. It was terrifying. It was, I've never seen somebody, somebody with such a chiseled calf. I've met one other guy like that. Really? He's got the craziest calves you ever want to see. Who's that? Because I've got decent little troll legs myself. Me too. But, I mean, my calves but, uh, are okay. But uh, this guy named Vince Tutalamundo. Okay. Who's That's up a in, lot he's, of names. Yeah. <laughs> He's uh, he's up in Cleveland, and, okay. and uh, like you look at his calf, and it, you just won't believe it until you actually see it. There's no way to describe. It. You're going to be like, "Oh, I've seen that's how Matt Sarah's calf." You're going to be like, "I've like, seen a big calf," real? but like then you see it, and you're like, shit. "Yeah, it yeah. literally like some act like looks like somebody just took like a chunk of of clay and carved right. it into a calf." That's hilarious. It, it was crazy, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this Neto Gomes awesome. got Neto Gomes Gomez has got some pretty healthy calves on him too. Yeah, yeah, they're about. They're about I don't know, 18 I mean, inches the dude, around. The dude built like the thing from the Fantastic Four. Perfect. Yeah, that's a good description. He is a thick For anybody dude. who doesn't know who Professor Gomez is, he he, uh, he actually uh, teaches out in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Um, comes into the Cleveland area every once in a while, so we, we make sure to train with him when he's in town. Yeah. Real real good guy. If you ever have the chance to train with him, definitely do. Um, so, anywho, we... Uh, let's talk about this arm bar box. Yeah, the, fir- the first thing I want to talk about is, is like... Um, you know what it comes in. It comes in like a, a kind of just a brown box, just a standard box. You know, it opens up. I, I I'm personally a fan of like more decorative style boxes. Oh, really? But, but you guys said you liked it because it's like a brown box, but it's got a really cool like uh, the, the, the the logo the right arm, there in the center. Yeah, yeah. the armbar box logo yeah. sticker. I would rather see it even in a white box. Really? Personally. but It'll fit right me. in your mailbox, though. You don't yeah. have to worry about somebody leaving it on the doorstep or something. Yeah. Yeah. When you're, if you're in a neighborhood where you got to worry about opportunistic neighbors being like, that does look cool. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I think that's I every neighborhood nowadays. M- Mr. Smith next door, you know, he, he gets done mowing and decides he also wants to take up Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Or maybe like somebody's dog has just box. like slipped a leash and it's like, whatever's in that smells delicious. I need it in my life. <laughs> that acai. I, I, I need a, a chia seed bar. <laughs> yeah, that was, the, that was one of the things in the box was an acai chia seed bar. Nice. That's a cool little touch, you know. How did it taste? It was. It tasted like you'd expect a bar like that to taste. Right, so like, shit. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. Like I'm, and again, I'm not. I'm not judging the box. I'm just saying. That, no, you but know, yeah, it's, I find those things to taste like cardboard. Like, you it, know, it tasted like acai. Like, like if cardboard. I took a blow pop and 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 wet it and then like rubbed it on some cardboard. So like I'd I'd eat it that's, and I'd be like, oh, this tastes like flavored. Yeah, that's cardboard. exactly what it tasted like. Okay, it wasn't bad. It was just it was very bland. Right. But that's like, what, how those bars taste. Yeah, that's what they're the, for. Yeah. Like if you're buying some a people love bar, them, so. yeah. you know what you're in for. You're yeah. not like, this is going to be delicious. No, it's going to be an efficient way to restock some of what you used up while you were working out. <laughs> they, they sound disgusting to me. Where, where'd you go, Ed? What are you doing? Oh, he's, I, grab, he's grabbing the box. Yeah, I just wanted to remember all the stuff in it. I don't, I don't want to shortchange our friends at Armbar Box. Yeah. Oh, no, they, 
so we're changing them. They're not paying us. Yeah. <laughs> we're just doing the thing. Well, so, <laughs> that shows you how highly I thought of the box, that I feel like I owe them something. Yeah, it's it's a pretty cool box, I, I got to admit. So, so it had the pemmican bar. I, I call it the pemmican bar for anybody who doesn't know what the hell I'm talking about. That would that's be all gonna, of us. That's probably going to be 90% of the podcast, unless you were a Boy Scout who happened to go to Philmont, New Mexico. But uh, Okay. Anyway. <laughs> oh, convenient. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, that's a super specific Nerd reference. <laughs> Nerd alert just went off. But there was these bars that basically seemed like they took a bale of hay and compressed it as small as they could and then wrapped it up and... That's what it tasted like. And, you know, they, they would give you those as, quote, energy bars for, uh, for the hike. And, and for anybody who doesn't know what that is, it, it you know, for me, it was a 100-mile backpacking trip through the mountains in yeah. north, north northwest New Mexico. Anywho, that has nothing to do with what we're doing. Um, so what's coming up? You, you, you wanted to talk about the fights. Yeah. You wanted to make this the UFC 214 special. Yeah, it's, the, it's, it's you know, it's a big card. Stacked. Top to bottom. Let's use some names, man. Uh Brian T. City Ortega, Gracie Jiu Jitsu Black Belt, fighting on the undercard against Hanato Masiano. Hanato Larajma? Moisiano or Mosiano? Is he going to go in there and talk about fruits and veggies? Uh, no, but he's, I'd rather see that fight. He's the number nine ranked fighter in the world, so T. City's got his hands full. Okay. Tough fight to come uh, back to. Is T. City ranked yet? Yeah, he's number eight. Oh, is he? Yeah, so it's a, it's a great fight. Okay. It's a great fight. So this for could both go of either way, really. Yeah. I'm, I'm pulling for T. City, of course. I like. Gracie Jiu Jitsu, and I like triangle, so I'm on his side. We're pretty right. much guaranteed to get a Gracie breakdown, depending how this goes, as long as grappling happens. As yeah, long as exactly. it wins. As long as he wins. Yeah, exactly. And then you got uh, Hennon Burrell coming back, who was, for a while there, people were starting to talk about as one of the pound-for-pound pound best in the world. Right. He's been on a bit of a slump. He's fighting, uh, speaking of uh, Matt Serra, yep. Aljamain Sterling, who's a Matt Serra guy. Okay. Yeah. So, what? What? Are, I mean, are any of them specializing in, in any kind of fighting? So, so for anybody listening, and this is maybe your first time listening, you could basically make up names and tell me that they're fighting, and I'm going to believe right. you because I watch like I know like six names, right. maybe the, the big biggest ones. names, but like Ed over here, he knows them all. Like for one, he is probably the number like. He's been in the top ten UFC players, like like for PlayStation. I don't know, man. I've been getting handled lately. Yeah, I don't I bet. feel comfortable saying that. I just don't uh, play enough. Just anymore. not there anymore, huh? Man, I got. And he, he was so good once <laughs> that he got kicked off of Xbox because people were saying that he was hacking. Yeah. And cheating because like he, and, and like we did this breakdown and he, I didn't even know it was live against a real person. He, and like he's showing me and he's like, yeah, so now I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and this guy. Oh look, this guy's going to try to get out. And I think he's just explaining to me like, like, like how the game goes and stuff. And it turns out there was another player on the other that end. Was a tutorial mode. Hearing that was a human game. hearing everything that's going on. He's hearing Ed saying. God. All I did these three things. takes on him. That's what's oh. the worst part is. I let him up and like, all right, let me reset the camera. <laughs> uh, I feel like hilarious. if you were rolling someone and you're like, okay, now you're gonna try to oop out a mountain, I'm gonna get your back. You mean how you, you get, how you do to everybody? What you're about, yeah, that's exactly what you do, Kendall. <laughs> I, I actually I realized Kendall's that. got the best shit talk. I during, use Kendall shit training. talking on UFC. That's what I do. Right. I use his approach on the video game. I you didn't just, realize that. You should Bob Ross explain the moves you're doing. Exactly. Like they want to think you're tricking them, but then you do it anyway. Yeah. yeah. And then you get into the big fights. You know, you got like uh, Robbie Lawler. Fighting Cowboy Cerrone. Who? His name's Cowboy. Uh, Donald Cerrone. You've never heard of Cowboy? Oh, this again. I know. You'd like him. This, yeah, this is going to be an incredible fight. Okay. Some somebody may die. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. But I don't I mean, want to see that at all. If you knew these two guys, they. There was a GIF image going around of him landing like a four-part combo on a guy a while ago. So you might have seen that. You might he went super saying. Oh, I do know which one you mean. Yeah, that's okay. like super, what do you say? It's super, super saying. Super saying. Saying, yeah. And, and I'm like, going to take bang, away your bang. geek card. You ask about saying one more time. Sorry, sorry. You didn't know how to say saying. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to judge anybody. That, that, <laughs> that might steal the show, honestly, those two guys. Okay. They're, they're brutal human beings. We'll just say that. Right. In Forrest Griffin's book, Got Fight, he defines gameness as, like, a willing to fight people you shouldn't fight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, like, the more gameness you have, the better the fight gets. So. And these two might be the most game guys to ever step in the cage. I think yeah. my other problem is that, that... I said DS Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> They're on that level, though. Yeah. I think my other problem is that, like, the guys I do know don't fight anymore. You, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. Because I, I, I only watched it for a very short right. period of time on a regular basis. And then I had kids, and, and I, yeah. I just don't got time for that. But uh, 
you know, and for some reason his name is escaping me now, but he was absolutely savage. Never, never really fought for like the number one contender or, or but uh, what was his name? Uh, had long hair, was really crazy fighter. Maybe Clay Guida. Clay Guida, Clay Guida that's him. Yep. Yeah, I loved Clay Guida, man. You're a fan, huh? Oh, I love him. <laughs> he's awesome. insane. It's like watching the Tasmanian Devil when yes. he's in there. He's actually still... He still like, gets he still around competes. a little bit. I think, is he in Bellator now? Or? Um, I'm not sure where he's at, but he's he might still, actually still yeah. be in the UFC. I yeah, think he's he still legit. Recently. Okay. He's still doing it. I mean, he's never going to be champ, but... But he's making a, a Greg Jackson guy, and they all do yeah. pretty well. Yep. Like I always saw him as like a gatekeeper. Like if you can't get past him, you're not you're That's not you're not fighting for number fair one. Fair assessment. Is, I think so. You know, like like he may not ever make it. It's he, right. he's like the Soda Popinski. Um, <laughs> Soda Popinski. <laughs> Super Tyson reference there. Yeah. 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 If you don't get that, go back to the '80s and start your life again. Yeah. But uh, something I really like like about Clay Weed is back before I started grappling, I remember uh, maybe before I started grappling, I think. But uh, I was watching a video of, I want to say it was, um, not Damian Maia, Diego Sanchez, like, kicking him straight up in the face, like, full high kick landed right on his jaw. Clay gets stunned for, like, a second, and then he's fine. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah that dude is just tough. If, if straight up, like, shin-to-the-face contact isn't going to knock a guy down consistently every time, then we just have to come to a point in our lives where maybe you do really need a backup plan. Yeah. Like, <laughs> That's why that's why God made jujitsu. Yeah. A professional face kicker can't always knock you out. I'm not saying like Mirko Krokop did it, but like you know, what chance do I have of like knocking a guy None. like that? You have out? no chance of knocking out Clay Guida. And then in the next fight, I don't know where I heard this. Uh, well let's before we go into that, let's let's talk about some more stuff out of the armbar box. Oh. So for anybody if you don't know what we're talking about, the armbar box, this is like a it's kind of like a loot crate, right? I think that's the best yes. the best thing. You know, it's one of those box that's subscription why, things, yeah. right? <laughs> And, and so the, the company's called Armbar Box. It's yep. armbarbox.com. Um, you know, you, you go on, you sign up. And actually, they've got a deal right now. Going yeah, until the end to, of the month. Yeah, till the end of the month where it's normally like thirty four ninety nine, Something like that, yeah. I might be making up numbers. But it's twenty nine ninety five. Yeah, and it's twenty nine ninety five till the end of the month. For what you get, but it's a good price. at any time, if you use promo code BLACKBELTTIPS, okay. you know, just for our listeners... Uh, they've they've given ten percent off. Oh, sweet! So you, you know that's awesome, and that's for the life of your of your subscription. Oh, wow! So you know, don't let it lapse because then, of course, you'd probably pay Full regular price. price. But you know, go on there, use promo code Black Belt Tips. Ed's probably signing up. Ed, put your phone away. Sorry, Ed's signing sorry. up right now. I was trying. I was going to try to negotiate with this guy, get him to send me another one. But if you, not, I'll just sign up. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so uh, it had a cool T-shirt in it. Yeah, it was a sweet T-shirt. I actually wore it yesterday, didn't yeah. I, Kendall? I saw you. Yeah, I saw it. Too. It was actually a really high quality T-shirt. I was pretty impressed with it. Yeah, I've worn it twice. Now, and when it's in Hawaii Jiu Jitsu, if yeah, I remember and it had like a bottle cap type design kind of on right, the side, kind of staggered. Thing, yeah. yeah, it was yeah, pretty it's sweet. Pretty sweet. I liked it a lot. Okay. And then it had the defense soap, which I've actually been wanting to try. I just could never bring myself to to pay for defense. Yeah, soap. six dollars a box or whatever. But now that I've used it, I kind of am a fan. Do you feel more clean? Um. No, but I feel like I smell better. It has a nice minty, like yeah. manly smell. We to have it. been and meaning to talk to you. You wouldn't, you wouldn't feel. <laughs> I'm not saying that we put it in the box. I'm just saying we put it in the box. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, they feel like dead. What? The, the, the bacteria. bacteria. The bacteria. Oh. Yeah. So the approach I normally take is just wallow in my own filth for about eight or nine days. Yes. Use your own. Until the bacteria will fight each other enough that they kill each other off. Is that not how it works? Yes. Right, right. And then oh. you hit it with the defense soap so you don't die. Oh. What happens yeah. is oh, okay. you, so you introduce an exotic bacteria <laughs> that outcompetes all the local bacteria, but then it uses up all the food because it's too successful, and then their population drops to nothing. Oh, wow. Oh, well, yeah. See, that that's what right. I was hoping for. Isn't that what they were going to do with I, the rabbits I guess I'll just Australia. bathe instead. Let me know how that worked out. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Oh, okay. The, the ecology. We, we, get, we, get Kendall, we get Kendall on these kind of discussions. It and gets he'll go real serious. Right. This is like his degree. He, yeah. He's good at that kind of stuff. And then they had the adult fidget spinner. The the what? The adult fidget spinner. Oh, the grip thing. Yeah. You call like, it the adult fidget it's spinner. It's called a, a Grip Master Pro Hands. And it, it's designed to make your grips better for jujitsu. That's what she said. But the reality of it is, it's actually like a fidget spinner for adults. You just want to sit there and push the buttons. So do you play with this all day? Um, no, I actually let my son have it, and he hasn't set it down for like seven days. And, you know, he does jujitsu. He's convinced it's going to make his grips better. But he, he just can't stop pushing the buttons. And then when he's not using it, I'm using it. So, yeah, it's gotten a lot of use. Yeah, as I sit here squeezing it, as I talk about it. In it and yeah. The individual fingers are articulated. So That's what like, I liked, yeah. If just like your ring finger needs the work. My pinky is not like, strong. Like if you're like <laughs> me and you've accidentally like popped the occasional joint while grip fighting and you're like, ah, oh, 
time to rehab just you, middle finger. <laughs> yeah, this is perfect for that. <laughs> yeah. Got to get back to being able to do pull-ups and stuff with you. With just my middle finger. Well, no, but it needs to It needs to help. It needs to be on the team. All right. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yep. So, so what's the next fight on the card? Oh, yeah, that's what I started to say. You guys remember in Jurassic Park when they fed the sheep? Yes. To the Tyrannosaurus Rex or whatever, the Very Velociraptor? Much. Yeah, so that's the next fight. It's uh, Chris Cyborg. Oh, yeah. Who's she murdering? Um, Tanya Evinger, who's the Invicta champ. Oh, yeah, she's gonna die. Yeah, she. I, it it does have the makings for one of those like greatest upsets ever because it's such a mismatch. Like I think she's like a like a plus two thousand or something. So you have to bet like two thousand dollars to win a hundred bucks. Do you know what I mean? That's so. insane. Story, well, what weight class does Tanya Evinger fight at? Uh, I believe 135. Okay. And, and they're fighting at 145. Or so, Yes. Hmm. Because I want to say that Cyborg walks around somewhere in the 170s. Yes. Cyborg yesterday at the press conference. Like, I would not fight her. Right. Like, you There's don't take, no way. You don't want to take anything away from no. her. But it's like Brock Lesnar somehow cutting enough to get the light heavyweight. Again, not accusing anybody of anything, but does she's, she look less juicy? Um, I mean, her no. last fight, she... She's been busted a popped. few times. We can all acknowledge that, so it's a fact. She honestly looked like Brock Lesnar in a white dress, to be honest with you. Wow, that's... Uh, yeah. That's it, scary as shit. It was. <laughs> I... I don't know if I, I should say I this. I hear but... she looked absolutely beautiful, Ed. Okay, so my son but is Ed, young. Ed, Edward Whitney of Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio, said she looks not very pretty and so he wants to beat I, her up. I, so my son, who's uh, 11, so he, he's not judgmental, but he's, he's he walked into the room. By yeah, because yes. we know kids yeah. aren't judgmental. I walked into the, he walked into the room as I was watching the press conference, and he said to me, Dad, why is that guy wearing a dress? <laughs> and I was like, that's not a guy. That's Chris Cyborg. And we both had a chuckle, and I told him that wasn't nice, but yeah. So that's what she looked like yesterday. Naivete. Yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So she's going to eat this late girl? Is that like? Is that what we're doing? We're putting, like, the, just like There's them? nobody left. Nobody of nobody wants to fight her. She's that dangerous. Well, I get her off the damn juice. I agree. I mean, that's why it's hard again, for me to celebrate her. I'm not saying her she's still on it, but. Well, here's the thing, though. Like, if Her arms were bigger than yours, Bill. That's, Bane's a, that's that I have find hard to find, like, yeah. hard to believe. The big part of her appeal is her like starching the fuck out of people. I don't know if I should be swearing. Starching people real early on in like a gratuitous fashion, Tyson or Rousley style, depending on how you want to think about it. Let's pretend that she was still just as dominant, but it took all the way, all the through the rounds, and she didn't get as many finishes if she was off the juice. Her brand is kind of gone if she does that. Like. Yeah. Outside of just wrecking people, like, people don't watch for, like, oh, man, I hope she gets this six submission. They watch to see her, like, ragdoll somebody, like the Hulk flinging Loki around. Yeah, so I guess it's, like, you know, the people who watch NASCAR for a car wreck or yeah. whatever else, yeah. right? They just want to see the fast the fast right. fight and be done. They want to see a really asymmetrical fight. Yep. Like, which it's of, actually an argument or a discussion you yeah. and I were having about Bellator. Right, like, in the UFC, sometimes... That's a truck. Yeah. Sometimes you get, like, two fighters who are, you know, maybe not the right matchup for each other. But in Bellator, sometimes you get a guy who really shouldn't be in there with another guy. Actually, sometimes you get two guys who shouldn't be in there together. Yeah. But, and sometimes you get to see a really one-sided fight, and you're like, yeah. That's pretty entertaining. That was entertaining to see, like, just how big the gulf can be between a, near, like, a national caliber guy and a world caliber yep. guy. Yeah, so the, what we were talking about is that uh, sometimes Bellator is more exciting because the fights aren't as equal, equally matched as they yeah. are in the U.S. Well, I mean, it's kind of like when when I bring in Andres or you know somebody like that here, like he absolutely murders me. You know what I mean? Like, and it's like I'm a, I'm a first degree black belt. I'm not bad at jujitsu. <laughs> no, you're really good. And then <laughs> you're really good. But like. This kid comes in and just makes me feel like I don't know what the hell I'm doing. You're talking about a world class guy. That's, That's what I mean. Yep. Like, like it's it's a different level, you know. And and you just got to accept that that exists. Yep. And that's what we're gonna watch most likely on Saturday with these two fighters. Yeah. Well, that'll be interesting. So, what else was in the box? Um, I, wasn't there like a mouthpiece and stuff? Yeah, a mouthpiece and a mouthpiece case. What kind? What kind? Shock doctor. They oh were wow! Actually, so yeah, they was a good, good yeah. brand. It wasn't just junk. You use it yet? I have not. No? Full disclosure, I have not. I, I can't bring myself to open that one until my other one's no good. You know how cheap I am. 
I already have a mouthpiece and a mouthpiece case, and until they're no good. Well, why don't we do this? I'm why don't we donate thing. it to somebody in the school then that's going to use it? It's I'm going to use it. That's not going to work. That. We're going to donate that. We're okay. going to donate that to somebody. Cool. Edward was asking for a mouthpiece. <laughs> Edward does not need a mouthpiece. <laughs> and that wouldn't be the best. I'm just going to say I that, like, this, Edward. it's not just junk should actually just be, like, a tagline they start putting on their mouthpieces for Shock Doctor. Yeah. Get it? Because the other thing they make is cups. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, what? Because the other thing they make is cups. Oh, okay. They make gum shields and cups. Gum shields gum and groin shield. protectors. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's fun. Yep. Um, did, we, did we miss anything? No, that was it. But, I mean, you think about it, that's one, two, three, four, five, six things. And, I mean... Yeah, the for, defense... Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, you got it written down there. Yeah, so, I mean... For, yeah, I mean, it was like... So, it was like 50 bucks worth of stuff. 50, maybe even least, 60. Yeah, 60. I would say 60, 70. Yeah, it's uh, good, good stuff, too. Yeah, I like, like the t-shirt was really cool. They, it was quality stuff. I mean, I would have paid 25 bucks for the t-shirt alone. Yes. That's probably what you would pay for it somewhere. Yes. And then all the other stuff basically for four dollars. Yeah. So you're winning. So yeah, I mean, I recommend the product. I, so I was a fan. Cool. I liked it. And again, they're not paying us anything. Zero. So they gave us the box wanted. to review. That was it. Yes, technically they paid us in an armbar box. <laughs> yeah. So, so <laughs> I guess I guess technically we were paid, but but not really. You know, yeah. Like, technically. So. And I don't know about you guys, but when I buy stuff online, part of the fun of buying stuff online is, like, waiting for it to get to me and also being really mad at when I'm, like, watching UPS and I'm like, I can tell it's a block away. Yeah. What's going on, guys? But <laughs> for this, you know, if you subscribe to it, you've got that to look forward to, like, every month or however often they send it. Yep. I agree with that. I, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't want to get into a debate on the podcast. I agree 100%, Okay. Kendall. The maximum possible percent. <laughs> so, so the background on that, it, Ed, Ed says I agree 1,000%. Like, he likes to say that. And I think everybody... We can, know what you mean. Can agree that that is just what so, something people say. It, right. it is it's a numeric hyperbole. But but That's somebody it. somebody who was like, "There's no such thing as a thousand percent," so you can't do that. And like they got into a debate, you know, because technically there could be. But right. anyway, yeah. It, and I was just like I said, numeric hyperbole. That's all. Using inflated numbers to emphasize a point. That's all I was doing. All right, so so who's in the next fight? See, this is the one that's got me fired up. Fired up, he says. I mean, Guys, you, you heard no him here idea. first. He's I'm fired up. I did. Tyrone Woodley against Damian Maya. Nice. You're talking about grappling at its finest. And then, you you know, Tyrone Woodley also has deadly knockout power. But going to see some high-level grappling in this match, I feel like. Wasn't there... Did Damian Maya win a fight recently without a single punch getting thrown, like landed by other guy, or was it just yes. that he didn't throw? Any I, I forget what the exact. The last time we discussed Damian Maya at that point, it was something like five fights and a total of like fourteen punches. Yeah, or it was some, like five some fights. ridiculous yeah, it was stat. Absurd. It was like an average of three punches landed in the fights. That's some wacky nonsense there. Yeah, that's like... that's jujitsu at another level. When you can go, when you can apply your jujitsu on the most dangerous dudes in the world. See, like it's. It, it makes sense to me that I can do that to some guy on the street who's never trained. Right. But to be able to do that to, I don't remember, Matt Brown right, or, you know, Carlos Condit or somebody right. like that, it's crazy. Yeah, and that's such a stacked weight class in everything, too. Like, I'm, I'm, there's not like there's a weight class where it's a bunch of, like, no names who are no good. Except the light heavyweight division in the UFC. But, Whoa, uh, they're... Yeah. Big Nog is still <laughs> right there. <laughs> Noguera is still in the rankings. Okay, you're not wrong. Wow. But. Yeah. But you see <laughs> in the top ten. That's a very competitive weight class. Yeah, it really is. So, so I assume, and this is going to show again my ignorance of, of the UFC. But Maya is the champ, right? No, Woodley no. is. Oh, Woodley's Woodley. the champ. Yes, he's been oh. the champ. Yeah, see, I didn't know this. Yeah, he beat the guy who beat the guy who beat the guy. So this is for the championship. For the championship, all the marbles. How has Maya not been in this fight already? Then um, he's he's won seven straight fights, and that's and, my what point. It is, <laughs> I I hate to get into conspiracy theories, but the reality of it is is. Guys like us yeah. love to see somebody strangle somebody. That's true. Everybody else. The doesn't. layman wants to see. You know what I mean? And also, again, for people who can't see this, I threw some punches in the air. Ed made a funny sound and then made some King very Kong. funny punches. Yes, right. King Kong style punches. And like, you have to remember that Maya is like a soft-spoken, like respectful guy. He might be the nicest guy. And in the like, UFC. it's real yeah. easy to hype up a fight, being like, "I'm gonna kick the shit out of this guy." I hate him. It's, also, it's easier to hype up a McGregor than a Stipe. Yep. And here's a video of me getting people who knew him as a child saying they hate him too. Yep. Right? <laughs> that, that hypes up a fight where it's like, no, I respect him a lot. I'm going to try to tap him without hurting him because I respect him a lot. Get us both fighting again soon. Yeah. Like, that's what Maya does. That's admirable, but that doesn't make you be like, oh, I want to watch him do that. <laughs> it does me. 
Yeah, me fair. too. You I heard guess, me. You heard I me say I am excited, fired man. up. Like, but like to the average fan, like if you were saying I'm going to hold the guy down for five rounds and do nothing to him, you'd be like, no. Well, see, that's not what Maya does. I know, but like I'm just trying to take it from like yeah, the yeah. way the average like stand him up guy. Like, wants like had George St. Pierre come on and said, yeah. So in this one, I'm going to hold this guy down yeah. and then do just enough, maybe punch him in the head once and then hold him down and then yeah. and then that's it. That's why yeah. that's what I do. Yes. <laughs> Like, people would have been like, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to come see this Damien fight. Maya finishes right. fights. Yes. The reality of it is, is what, no matter what your beliefs are, if somebody gets you in a rear naked choke right. and they decide not to let go, right. that's and, all she wrote. And when you can pull, like, bottom mount and somehow come up on somebody's back. Yeah. <laughs> when you can, like, teleport and just appear on their back. That's, a, that's actually good you said that. Um, I think it was Brandon Schaub. You guys don't know who that is, but I heard him. I just want to I know credit who he him. Is, yeah. I heard him talking about. Uh, He's got a podcast almost as famous as ours. Yeah, they they're close in downloads. <laughs> yeah. they, they're coming up. We got to give them a little respect. <laughs> but uh, as long as you pay no attention to decimal points, that's safe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he was actually talking, thinking Maya should pull guard, and I, I tend to agree. I think that's probably a great strategy. Well, that was his strategy against Cyborg Ray. <laughs> I can't well, even. That's the opposite. <laughs> and Metamorphs. the job shut down? Yeah. He, he you know, survived. Run away. He survived against anyway, Cyborg. This is not a job. Think about it, though. Shab, like. He didn't survive. He didn't even engage him. He did. Uh, anybody can survive against anybody <laughs> if you simply don't true. fight. That is not true. If yes, I get on the mat with If with you Cyborg, go lay down on the mat and you don't, and, and I walk around you and don't bother engaging, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to win, but I'm not going to, nothing's going to happen. I mean, they and that's what he did. No, they did not. You need to go back and watch that fight because you're maybe, not remembering. Maybe it I have a distorted. Maybe I have a distorted, distorted perspective. He ran away. Like they literally podcast. call it shobbing people when yeah, you the run shop away. Yeah, the shot shut down. Exactly. No, it's called <laughs> shobbing, and it's when you run away. You don't fight. That's funny. He maybe literally didn't want anything again. to do with it. I'm giving him too much credit. I'm yeah. biased. Cyborg literally had to run at him and dr- like run and like dive to the ground to try to get him. And then <laughs> Shab ran away from it. That's and awesome. I don't blame him. Like if you don't want to get tapped, I guess that's what you do. But like you or you don't join Metamorphs. Yes. I mean that's really what what should have happened. Yeah, I agree. But anyway. I feel like But had so he... did he pull guard? No. Then how is that the same? Because I'm retarded. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if he had just been like up front of it before the match and been like, my goal is to just zone him out and never let him grapple me. And you guys should all watch me do this because I'm a baller. Then people would be like, well, he said he was going to do it. That's Cyborg's fault for not having a plan. Fair. Not the worst idea. I've heard worse ideas. No. Crazy. That, again, would not sell tickets. No. no none no, none of these not. things sell tickets. That's a fact. And then we get into the main event. Okay. The one we've been waiting for for three years. Have I? I met me and Kendall. Right. Okay. Yeah, me and Kendall have been waiting right. People who watch UFC. Yes. Yeah. Which, yeah. which, by the way, is a large portion of the population. Yeah. It's, I, it I'm turns out the... it's one of the most valuable franchises in the world now. So it's not just me. I know you like to mock me for being a fan, but... Yes, so we got Daniel Cormier, defending champion against John Jones. Okay. Who brings the cocaine? Uh, Daniel Cormier is a pretty good guy, which is so funny. Like, if you hear the like the press conferences, everybody's booing DC like he's the one that was crashing into pregnant ladies and doing blow. And then Jones comes out and everybody's like, "Whoa, he's such a great guy!" It's like if, I just don't get it. It's like if Santa Claus was an MMA fighter and an amazing one. Yeah, and he would just come out and everybody would boo. boo you're Santa terrible, Claus. Santa. He gave me coal when I was naughty. <laughs> Fuck him. Whereas, like, and then Jones comes like snorting coke. Yes, and hitting women with his car yes and like crashing into pregnant women right and then run take off leaping over fences doing like interviews where he's like i would never cheat in mma man you poke a guy in the eye every fight yes i agree every single fight i don't i mean don't get me wrong john jones most talented dude we've ever seen step into the cage i don't even have an argument over damien my is in pure pure talent talent? Talent. yeah oh it's not even close okay yes now why do we say that He's a physical freak. Like he's, well, what is his reach, Kendall? It's like eighty-four inches or something. Well, so he might be more gifted striking, but what about on the ground? So no, no, no. I'm saying, um, I guess what I'm I, maybe talent is the wrong word. I'm talking like what he started with when he came out of the womb. His genetics. Oh, he is the most genetically gifted. Okay. Athlete, we. I would go ahead. Like, okay, so Maya had a long and prestigious like record of being good at jujitsu before he got into MMA. Yeah. And then like he's. He does it differently now, but he's still using that same base skill set 
to be really good. But, like, if you watch Jones in his early fights, he's getting away with stuff you shouldn't be able to get away with. Like, he's part of why spinning elbows are such a thing. Like, mm. and he's, like, now that his game is shored up, he's beating good strikers at striking embarrassingly, like... And then beating good grapplers at grappling. Yeah, and then he's hitting takedowns on, like, super high caliber on, grapplers. In the first fight, Daniel Cormier is, is an Olympian. Right. And he couldn't take... He took Jones down once, and John right. Jones just ragged yeah. on him. Yeah, Jones changed up his gripping game, and Yeah, then it was D crazy. DC's like, I don't know what to do about yeah. this anymore. It was... It was that's, that's impressive stuff. Yeah, I, th I honestly think he's probably the GOAT. He might be the best um, we've ever seen. So... Uh, I, I, guess, I guess my next question then is I, I thought that Jones has been out for a while. Three he's years. Been out a very long while. Yeah. Okay. He's had like one fight in three years. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I'm actually, I actually am picking DC to win the fight. Yeah. Yeah. It's his last chance though because he's almost 40. You know what I mean? It's And, and what's his, it like now is this a title fight of all? Oh, yeah. All? It is. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. John Jones, unless he got stripped of his intern title, I believe he's the intern, interim champion and DC's right. the actual champion. So it's like re at least. So how can you be, be an interim champion after three years? Um, because well, go ahead, Kendall. Okay, so what I guess happened was back in the day he was champ, and then he had to abdicate his champhood due to some legal issues and some things he did. Right. Got busted taking uh, banned penis banned enhancement pills. Substances. Right. Was that the one that they? That was the most recent one. I think. Okay, gotcha. And then DC, you know, fought Rumble, who he was gonna fight. He became champ. And I want to say DC like hurt his leg or something. Yeah, he couldn't he fight. So an then, ACL issue then so. John Jones won the title from somebody else, like uh, like whoever wins this fights next type championship. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. The UFC I just feel a, like after three years you shouldn't be anything. You should be. Yeah. I don't even think you should be allowed to come back into a championship fight. <laughs> I agree with you, yeah. but the reality of but it is he's, he's selling that tickets. Good. He's like, that good. And yeah. the other question is, who else was DC gonna fight? Because he fought Rumble. He, he yeah, he's beaten fought, everybody. Um, he fought Gustafsson, didn't he? Yeah. And like that's. Like the top four guys in that weight class. Yeah, fair you enough. You can't just fight them over and over again. Turn, especially yeah. when you've got a game John Jones just sitting there waiting, like doing all this power lifting and stuff on YouTube all the time. Yeah. He's deadlifting like yeah. 600 pounds. It was pretty impressive for like, a tall what's he guy. weigh? I don't know, 205. He fights Holy at cow. sub 220. Right. He's he's easily got like a frame that he could be going up to heavyweight. So so uh, did you see they're adding some weight divisions to yes. the UFC? Yes. I, I didn't see this. I, it's yeah. supposed to be 10 pounds. It's yeah. going to be every 10 pounds now. Yeah, there's, huh. there's like a 225 now, yep. which I think is, that's, I actually like isn't that, that going to be their heavier? That's Yeah, so the, the light heavy is 205, and then heavyweight goes all the way up to 265. Yeah, yeah. which so, is I ridiculous. Mean, that's nuts. Like, Frank Muir's a giant guy, and he looks he was looking real small in a lot of fights for a while there, and he had to put on muscle. That's a frightening situation to be in. Yeah, it's not cool. Yeah, like, Heavyweight's the too. wild west of like weight divisions where, like, who knows? Like, some Shaquille O'Neal-shaped guy could cut down to skeletal weight and just, like, punch you from a quarter of a mile away. Yep. Uh, what's what's that big, tall Stefan Struve, the yeah. seven-foot-one guy? Right. He's a guy who just, like, I feel like he never lived up to his potential. Yeah, me too. But he's not that old, I don't think. I think he's only in his, like, no, mid-20s. He's, and he's still growing and stuff, but... That's got to be, like, difficult on, like, your heart and stuff, just being that big. And blood has to travel all the way from one part of you to another part of you. So, Kendall, yeah. who you got in the fight? DC Cormier, or DC My versus Jones? My heart says DC, but, you know, I'm actually going to go with DC in general. I think yeah. my brain also says DC. Okay. Like Bill said. Three years off. Jones hasn't fought in a long time. A lot of cocaine problems. Yeah. Um, I feel like there's more pressure on Jones. Oh, like, yeah. If DC loses, oh, well, I guess I'll never be the best at this. Who cares? Retire and still be a beloved guy. Like, yep. it's not like you're gonna win or lose any fans based on how you perform in this fight, right? Yeah, fair. And like, Jones is still going to, no matter what, be the guy who people are gonna be like, "Well, he missed his prime." Yeah. He didn't do it great. Hit a lady with his car. Yeah. Yeah, because Jones had the potential to be the. So, right. um, he hit a lady with his car, and, and right. what happened out of that? Did he go to jail? Yeah. Um, I don't know if he necessarily oh. like went to prison. How is this guy even allowed to fight? He got so, like, I guess, incarcerated. Like, I think these people, your Michael Vicks, your and I mean, I guess you could make the argument that they did their time. Yeah, right. But like, I don't know. I just you're getting popped for drugs. You're getting you're getting all the. They, I mean, it just makes me angry that 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 the public is still behind someone like that. You know what I mean? And and they that's the only reason because because the only reason he still gets a fight. 
is because when they say his name, money just falls on them. Right. Yep. Right. I mean, if if, if, if if the UFC said John Bones Jones and everybody's like, oh, I'm not going to see him, no way, and you know, like they, they would, would just they, fade he'd be into gone. oblivion. Yep. You, you know, but like they they say his name and people just like spray money at him like crazy. Because they want to see him fight, and it's like you know, here you have a person who, who, uh, I won't call him a piece of trash. I don't think that's fair. Because nah. I mean, he, but like, and you know, like, but he's certainly not on the up and up. I mean, he, he's done, he's used performance enhancing drugs. Right. He, he's used, uh, you know, he gets in trouble for cocaine and all these things. He's just, on paper, you wouldn't yeah. pick him to be the guy to watch. Your he's kids. a horrible example right. for. For kids to be watching, and let's be honest, this like, is DC. Like, on the other hand, just but not a good to... example. And I, I agree. By the way, I have that same stance in all sports. Yeah. yeah. So, like, like, like my my favorite team is the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I'm sorry. Well, no, you're, you're welcome. I'm sure there's people. But like you with that Ben Roethlisberger, you know, obviously has had some seedy things. That, oh you know, he, yeah, a he lot. Has, quote, but well, he's been accused of. Never, yeah. never been proven and never gone to, to trial. But like. Like so, like I don't like that. One thing I do like about the Steelers is they do tend to get rid of guys who, who like, if had it been proven in any kind of way, then he probably would have been kicked off the team. And there's there's teams that just don't care. They they keep those people anyway. Yeah, you, you know, like, and I, I think that's horrible. I, I just don't like it. I I, I don't want to. I don't blame the team. I guess because as long as people are willing to get behind them, then right. I don't want to defend John Jones, but he was like what twenty one or something when he won the title. Yeah. So he, he went from being like a regular 19-year-old right. kid. Because I, I think he started training like two or three years before. Right. So he was like 19, 20 years old. Got a millions of dollars dumped on him. You know what I mean? Grew up in a right. poor yeah. environment. Yeah, I get and it. Like, so did LeBron James. Le, LeBron and James LeBron, is not normal, man. He's, no, I agree. He, he's the exception. That's what I love about right. the guy, you know. is And I know we're getting off topic of UFC. No, but I mean, I, I get what, that's a good comparison. But, but like, LeBron, that, that's the one thing about LeBron. I remember watching him when he played for, who did he play for? St. Ed's? Was it St. V. St. V. And uh, I remember watching it because he was, he was on ESPN. Yeah, in high school. <laughs> in high school. Yeah. And, and, like, people were like, oh, this guy's unreal, you know. And I was like, oh, we'll see what happens, you know. like And he has done nothing but impress me, you know. Right. I didn't even get mad. And LeBron when he, when he also left had, was Cleveland. he also had the benefit of being surrounded by a lot of good people. Right when he went to St. V, that helped keep him guided. Yeah. Actually, something you Ed and I have talked about in the past is uh, I was listening to a thing about neurology recently, and they were making the argument that just the way your brain works after about ninety days of being happier than usual, like if you win the lottery and suddenly your quality of life is better, after about three months. Your quality of life, despite what it is, like your general level of happiness recalibrates, and that's just what you expect anymore. So right. a lot of these people, they get huge, huge success, and about three months later, they're bored again, and they have to keep trying to chase that high, either with like drugs or like gambling or not even anything like that illicit. But well, they that's have to where find these people different. just need to be surrounded by right smart people. Like, like, like and, and I guess that that it does make, bring up a good point that you brought about LeBron is there were people put in place. Probably by the NBA. Maybe I don't know. And I, I mean, the, let's be honest. The NBA didn't doesn't want to blemish. They, I mean, no. he's yeah. he's arguably. I mean, you could. There's people who you make know, the argument he's the best ever. I but, would. You know, what, you know, he may be, he may not be. But we whatever. are in Ohio, so he's, I'm a little biased. He's <laughs> he's among them. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know, and you know the NBA knows that they know he's about to sell billions of dollars for them. So, you know, they're gonna they're gonna want him to to have his if they made eyes dotted and T's crushed. If they made a Mount Rushmore of NBA players, I put LeBron on my Mount Rushmore. Okay. But also related to that thing I was talking about, though, they also say that the people who like tend to stay happy longest when they have these kind of successes where they suddenly have things they never had before are people who invest them in stuff like charities. Because the joys you get from like charities, if you get addicted to that, you're still pretty good, mm -hmm. right? Like no one's ever like, man... I sure did help those orphans up. It's, yeah, I forget. I was watching. I hope no one, one finds out. I was watching <laughs> like, this thing. It, it was it was a YouTube video, and and it was it was about Star Wars or whatever. And right. they were trying to bash Star Wars. Right. And every time they bash, <laughs> every time they went to say something bad about George Lucas, right. a little meme popped up, and it said <laughs> it says I donated four billion dollars to charity. <laughs> <laughs> and it's there a picture go. of George Lucas. Nice. Yeah, like you can because I guess after he sold Star Wars, he right. donated like. A, a ridiculous amounts of money to charity. Right. <laughs> Good so, for him. You should. Good job, George Lucas. I don't have to like what so he you did, did with his two franchise. Things, right? yeah. yeah, I'm not a fan of of your prequels, but <laughs> I was gonna say you made three really good movies and that. So there you go. <laughs> and even and, uh, I'm not. I'm a fan of you it. selling it. 
<laughs> I had never used the word midichlorian ever, but... I was about to get in there avalanche dumped on me. Mm-hmm. So I was going to say, the first three weren't even really that good. They're kind of overrated. They are overrated, but that doesn't mean they're not good. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll agree I think that. they're amazing. I don't. I love them. I like them. I like them a lot. That's like it's my fine. favorite genre. It's fine. You're allowed. Yep. Turns out you're, you're a person with opinions. And I, I live mean, in wrong. America. It's okay for them to be wrong. They can be wrong, yeah, but I live in America. So. All right. Well, anyway, I think that's all we have for the day. Yep. Yeah. You got anything, Kendall? Not especially now. All right, guys. So once again, armbarbox.com. Uh, use the promo code BLACKBELTTIPS. If you do that before uh, the end of the month here, the end of July, before August 1st, you will get uh, their special for twenty nine ninety five. Um, that's all I got, guys. This yes, is Bill sir. Jones, Edward Whitney. Thanks, Kendall, for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thank you, it. sir. Nope. Ed, how can they get in contact with us? Lots of ways. Uh, BLACKBELTTIPS at gmail.com, right? Yeah. Find us on Facebook, Black Belt Tips, uh, BlackBeltTips.com. Am I forgetting any? No, I think you got it, man. Nice. Awesome. Check us out. And don't forget to check out the armbar box. Yeah, I check it out. Fan. I, I it recommend it. I deal. like it. Yep. Kendall, what's your recommendation on the armbar box? I think it's good. I'd buy it. Okay. Right. Yeah. Cool. That's good enough. All right. Guys, we're out. Have a good day.